I found these Lazy Susans. They are so helpful. They, they're Target. Off, I got it off the internet from Target. But let me show you what I did to the refrigerator. I'm always excited when I find little things that really help. But see this big Lazy Susan there? I don't have to keep reaching in to get all the models out. I've got them over here and here. It's a big help. Tonight for dinner I'm making zucchini soup. And generally people don't know what it is. So I'm dicing onions and first and then it's zucchini and a little bit of garlic. And um, it calls for chicken broth, but instead of chicken uh, bro uh, broth, I use what's called a chicken base, which is a paste, which I'll show you later. And um, that makes the chicken broth. But I'm just going to cut this coarsely. Um, the recipe is in my cookbook, The Table at Grey Gables, which I will be getting reprinted. Um, and it has exact measurements. Um, I measure by sight because I cook so much. Um, and you get used to cooking and you hope it'll turn out by your guesstimation. But um, I don't like to say you don't measure because you do measure by sight. <clears throat> I'm going to chop these up just real coarsely. There'll be four adults and two children. And tomorrow I have, um, we'll have six for, uh, well, actually I'm cooking for eight tonight. Um, six adults and two children. And tomorrow for breakfast I'll have um, the same number. And then I'll have eight for bridge and six for tomorrow night for dinner. But this is for the soup tonight. So you have... Six people coming for dinner tomorrow night, but that is, what's that about? What's that for? That's bed and breakfast guests spending the night. Okay, you got guests. Coming. And I have two of my helpers that will be coming to serve them because I am going to a meeting with four of my guests. Excuse me, I'm going to go get the chicken base and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. You can get this chicken base at Sam's and sometimes at Walmart. Um, I order, I get it wholesale. And it's a little bit different than what you get from them, but it's a paste, and you'll just put the paste in, and you learn how much to add to make it like a, a regular chicken broth. And I'm going to get garlic to put in it. Um, this is called um, this is a chicken base, and I get what's called with no MSG in it. And this is what it looks like inside. It's a it's a it's a paste. And when you put the um, water in it, it makes your chicken broth. And we'll put some garlic in there. When you're putting um, water in, you don't want to over put too much because the zucchini has its own liquid in it. And if you put too much water in it, it gets too thin. So I'm going to put this in and let it start cooking. All right, we're going to finish making the soup. It's a zucchini, zucchini soup. It's on page 117 on the first cookbook, The Table at Grey Gables. Um, I don't know where I got the recipe, and I don't know if I said it before, but I say it again. If you share a recipe with anyone, be sure you put your contact information on it. it. Was when I was writing the second cookbook, I had recipes 
that people had given to me, but I hadn't cooked them right away. And I didn't know who, who gave them to me. And I want to give credit where credit's due. Because um, uh, the, my, my cookbook's recipes are from family, friends, and guests. They're not all recipes that I have done. So the zucchini soup, when we get ready to um, dress it, we'll have um, uh, uh, bacon bits in it. So this is pre-cooked bacon, and I'm going to put it in the, mic in the microwave and cook it, and then we'll, do, we'll put the soup in the food processor and finish it up. Earlier on, when I was getting prepping the soup, we did the onions and the zucchini in the bowl. I talked about the chicken base instead as a chicken broth. Now we're going to put it in the fruit processor and um, blend it. So this, that's what I'm going to do now. When, um, I think I also said when you're cooking your zucchini, don't put too much water in it because this, the zucchini itself has a lot of liquid and um, it'll make too much if you try to do it like you're cooking potatoes. Okay, let me get a... Well, that would help. Dirty up another bowl. You don't put any additional water or um, milk or anything in this. So this is the zucchini soup and then when we get ready to serve it We'll put the crushed bacon, uh, um, some sherry, and a dollop of um, um, sour cream. And that'll be it, and I'll show it to you when it's finished. So what we're doing is we're showing the ending of making the rich butterhorn rolls, which are on page 150 in the first cookbook, The Table at Grey Gables. And we're going to spray the pans with Pam or any other spray. This recipe has special meaning for me. It was The recipe was given to me by my very best friend in life. And we both knew the lady who had the original recipe, but she and my friend um, went to a garden club group together. And um, she said, you've got to have her roll recipe. And the thing about this <clears throat> is that you don't beat it and you don't need it. Uh, so t tomorrow, perhaps, we'll show the making of it. And then this is the rolling it out. So you saw that I didn't need it. I just took it out of the um, bowl and lightly rolled it out. And you can tell that these are homemade, and if my granddaughter were here and were cutting these, they'd all be exactly the same size. I just cut, and you can tell they're homemade because 
They're not all the same size. So some of you may get a small roll and some of you may get a larger roll. And there should be approximately 12 rolls per round. So 24 rolls um, per batter. And I allow for um, two rolls per person is what I figure that I make. You want to roll them up lightly. That's The rolling is why they're called butter horn. The way that we'll talk at one point about bed and breakfast and, and everything, but um, having been raised in the house that connected to our family's country store that you've been seeing on the R.M. Brooks part of it, I lived in the house from the time I was seven years old, and I grew up being trained and disciplined in customer service. And um, it gives me pleasure to see people enjoy being here, the, co the conversation around the table, eating the food, enjoying the room. Um, but realistically, owning a bed and breakfast is time consuming and it's hard work to do it right. And there are all kinds of bed and breakfast presentations there are those that um, the owner owns it, but they, they have someone else that manages it. Uh, there are some that um, have nothing to do with it whatsoever. Um, and then there are on-site persons like myself. Um, I live here. And um, it, I'm one of the few that offers, you have to decline the evening meal. Uh, your fare does include your evening meal and breakfast in addition to your lodging. So serving the evening meal consumes and is, it, it's, it makes more work. But I think the food um, and the camaraderie around the table when people are eating is one of the things that brings people back. My rooms are average rooms. They're not extravagant. Um, I'm probably the nearest to what a bed and breakfast really should be. It's a person who's opened their home um, for lodging. Um, so um, we have imperfections, but I want people to know that I'm doing my very best to make their time with us the best experience they can have. And um, when you reserve, I ask if there's any foods to which you're allergic, dislike, or cannot eat. And... Um, then I go from there. So, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. I needed 16. So that's two for you all and one each for the helper tonight. Then I'll put these other. And the thing about this, you can put, I can put this on the pan and uh, I'll be making more tomorrow. But I'll wrap it and put it in the refrigerator and it'll keep. Um, the third day it needs to be used because it, then it begins to really develop the yeast taste to it. But that's the beauty of it, that it can, um, no beating, no kneading, and it'll keep. So there you go. We're going to let these rise um, here for an hour and a half, and then time for dinner, and we'll eat them. I hope they'll be good. So that's the rolls. I have a family that will have been here seven days, so trying to find different foods that I'm not serving the same food every night and finding things that people like is always a challenge. So tonight I've already uh, cut uh, the asparagus and put it in to be steaming and I'm making um, carrots and I'm pattering this after um, a, a restaurant that my grandson took me to. She lo he loved the carrots, and he asked how they made them, and they just put a lot of sugar in and, and make them really sweet. So that's what I'm doing. Another recipe that my son-in-law likes best is carrots with horseradish. But since I have the children here, I think they'd be less apt to eat, and not everybody likes horseradish, so I'm just doing the plain um, sweet carrots.
I spent the break time talking to my daughter who's trying to help me find a part for my refrigerator door. The handle, one of the parts broke. They don't replace the part. I have to replace the whole drawer front, which is going to be about $300 just to replace the door for one little broken handle. So that's what I've been doing during break time. Um, so we've got the soup is zucchini soup. The salad is the Napa cabbage salad. I have boneless pork loin, uh, asparagus with an aioli sauce, and uh, sweet carrots, the homemade rolls, and the royal pumpkin dessert with fresh whipped cream. So what we can do now is go ahead and whip the cream so I won't be making a lot of noise during dinner. This is a quart of whipping cream that has this little top that drives me crazy trying to open it because it's so close to the container it's hard for me to open it. But when it opens, it opens real easy. And generally if there's a man here, I just hand it on to them. So John's going to open it for me. There we go. I nipped my thumb, just barely nipped the end of it one time, and there's no feeling in my thumb anymore. So it helps, it makes it difficult sometimes for me to grab hold of stuff. And one excuse is as good as another. Thank you, John. I'm making for the eight tonight and the eight tomorrow. When you um, do whipped cream, um, it's advised to use powdered sugar to sweeten it rather than um, granulated sugar because it tastes better, easier to mix, smoother. And let's see how much I splatter it all over me. see how sweet it is. I think you don't want to get it too sweet because the royal pumpkin dessert is sweet and it'll just be overpowering. So I think it's I think it's sweet. Maybe on one of the times you come, we can talk about the teas that we had done in the past, and I can give you some information about it. But if you go to teas and you hear a lot about Devonshire cream, it's the English for their teas, for their scones, and um, to make real Devonshire cream, you have to have basically, preferably a Jersey cow. I made it once using... Um, um, Guernsey <clears throat> and but I was doing whipped cream in the, the other mixer and I forgot it and the whipping cream made butter and I added a little bit of powdered sugar to it and it made the best Devonshire cream really really good so that accident turned into something that I could use when I do my cheese I ask um, the people that do the silver artwork that you'll see at the store, the angels and so forth, if he could make me some napkin rings, because napkin rings is kind of my thing. And I kind of gave him an, a feeling for what I wanted, and this is actually a teaspoon. You have to have a long handle, and he formed these for me. And, I'll, and I wanted to show you the napkin, the, the napkin holder that the McMahon's made. Make the table look really pretty. You can buy napkin rings rather inexpensively, like six or eight, but I need 48, 60 sometimes. So I make, most of them I make myself. I'll be, I'll be showing you what I'll be doing for Christmas when you come. I'll be making my napkin rings there. Um, I do etiquette courses for children. 
I have a group coming next week of homeschool kids. Um, 19 um, adults and 15 children. And I, I do teach them how to set the table, manners, um, eating from the outside in when you eat. If you're eating your soup, you start with a big spoon and come out. If you're eating salad, you start with a, the little fork. And it's been a pleasure for me. Been doing it for several years. I have actually a one in December that we'll be doing. This table will set 12 tightly, but once you set down, it's okay. You're all right, but, um, but it seats 10 comfortably. Hey, John, I want you to meet Bree. She's going to be my helper Linda. tonight. And John, this, this is Matthew. He's one of my guests tonight, and he doesn't know it, but I've got something good for Matt. I've got a little present for him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. You go back in there in a minute. I've got a present for you, too. So, Bree is going to be my helper tonight, and um, I'm very glad that she's here. Dad's going to have to show you how to use it, okay? This is for you, and this is for you. But let your dad open, help you open it up, so don't let him open it up for you. Help you open it up. What are you saying? These... Oh, uh, you stretch, you pull, you book. I didn't know if it. What are you saying? Thank you. You're welcome. Matthew, what do you say, buddy? Thank you. You're welcome. But how did he turn it on? Well, he's going to tell you how to do it. How do you do it? <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, these, I'm getting ready to put the rolls in the oven, and I cook my rolls in the convection oven. It's what you get used to, but. um. And when they come out, I hope they'll be nice and light and fluffy for you to eat. Um, Bree is putting the ice in the glasses for water and butter on the table for your rolls. The dishes that I use are called uh, King's Crown because of the red rim. And this pattern um, is, is thumbprint because of the, the thumb, the holes. <clears throat> this one is called Diamond. You can see it on this one better. It's, this is Diamond and this is thumbprint. Let me see if you can see the thumbprint on this one better. But that's thumbprint, and then the color is ruby red, and it's called King's Crown. What I have is all uh, <clears throat> reproduction made by Indiana Glass, uh, Colony Glassware in, Indi um, in Indiana. It started out with the punch bowl. That base is probably one of a kind now over on the, on the wicker table. My husband was still in school. I was home teaching on a uh, teaching certificate, and we had um, a young child, young baby. But sometime before I moved back, we went into to, um, Miller's department store, which was the department store at the time, and I saw that red punch bowl set, and I said, oh, one day, one day we'll have that. So I came home one Friday from teaching, and he had come in, and he had bought that, and he had the punch bowl and all the... Um, cups on the bed and that was in 60 maybe and I think he paid 60 we paid $60 for it which back then was a huge amount to pay the original punch bowl um, cracked and they replaced it but they weren't making it anymore it's bigger than this is a, a reproduction and um, it's not as big as the original one but so I started collecting, and I have two or three of this and two or three of that, and I thought either I'm going to collect it or I'm not. 
and there was a place in Oliver Springs that would go up to Indiana Glass and get seconds. So a lot of my red dishware are imperfections and seconds. <clears throat> so then um, I got carried away and just bought every piece of this that I saw. And I had to say, no more. You, I have some stored in the basement. But you can see this is filled. This piece came from my grandmother's um, dining room. And then this is filled. And um, if you'll give me a second, I'll turn on lights so you can see. Um, my mother had this, and I managed to replace and break all the glass doors, which worked out well for me because we can pull the things in and out more easily, and we use it all the time. This she had, and I had it refinished. And I bought the one over there for my grandfather for $45. Um, so I try to use the things that were in my family, um, not just have them there. And I want to use the dishes for people to enjoy. And, uh, okay, here's the rolls coming out of the oven. And Bree's going to come butter them. We're working to try to get get Bree a car so she can get to and from places real easily. She helps Tiffany at the store also. Ask her if she wants her to have this or ice cream. But I wish I would have talked to you more about it. There you go. Do you have yours? Here we go. Oh, yeah. I'll come back out in a minute and visit with you. I'll let you finish. I'm pumpkin pie. And a dollop of whipped cream. Of uh, sour cream, not whipped cream. Sour cream. You can go ahead. Okay. Put the um, bacon and drizzle it with uh, sherry. And sour cream. You can go ahead. Okay. Products and spoons. Maybe I've seen that on video. Thanks. What did you like? Bacon soup. Mmm, bacon soup. It's good for your brain. <laughs> so are you like that? So we have one too many because you want part of one with this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh what time would y'all like breakfast in the morning? Eastern time. More flexible. Whatever time Whenever you'd like you to fix it, we'll be here. Yep. <laughs> what is your schedule for tomorrow? It's to go put the gates up. Uh, so any time that works for everybody else. Mm -hmm. we're, we're used to about 9 o'clock. Yeah, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Okay. Lunch, Is that late. too late, too early for you? It's fine with us. Now, do you all drink coffee in the morning? Mm -hmm. Usually. Do you drink regular or decaf? Regular, regular. Coffee will be on the coffee pot there. He probably will make it. Or not, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to be up early to do some. We'll probably be early because of the elephants up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it'll be there, coffee and, and uh, creamer. I need someone to come up with me. I need someone to come up with me. Mr. Matt here, do you, did he tell you about being in the Navy? Matt here is in the Navy. He just junior, made... Sorry. Oh, that's the little junior. He's, junior. Okay. <laughs> he's called Matthew and he's called yeah. Matt. And he just made chief. Congratulations. So we're excited for him. It's still an enlisted grade then. I'm not, I don't know my ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, E7. Oh, that's, that's up the chain. That's up the chain a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know how to do a lot of things. So when I talk to people 
about doing them, I want to know that they th think I know what I want them to do. So I get on YouTube and I look on how to do this. And, and I have a group that's been co been coming for, um, I've been open 32 years. They've been coming 31 times. And a few years ago, this particular people from the East started coming. And these two men, it was after Bill died in 2010. Then when they came, they, they wanted to help me. You know, now, Miss Linda, what are we going to do this year? So I call them my frick and frack, like crick and crack, <laughs> click and clack of the brothers on public radio. And they're so sweet. They just they just want to do anything I want. So the uh, belt on my dryer went out. And they were putting a new belt. Is that what's around the... Around the and they had the video on how to put it in, and it was so funny because we, we all just love watching them work because they just talk back and forth. You've ever heard those click and clack brothers, how they chatter back and forth? Well, these two do that. But they were watching the video on how to put that belt back in. And so I've learned to, if I want to know something, I get on the computer and I look to how to, and then when I talk to the people, I'm understanding a little bit more about what they're talking about or what needs to be done. The room that you're in is the one that President and Mrs. Carter stayed when they came in 1997. Oh. Cool. I don't know which side of the bed they slept on, so you have to get up in the middle of the night and <laughs> change sides. Well, I'm going to go back in and help. Uh, no, see, we decided on 9, and he'll get coffee out earlier. I'll be up early, but um, if, he, if you get up early, earlier, um, that'll be fine. Okay. Look worn out. I am. But it's a good tired, you know, there's a difference between when you feel like you've accomplished something. I'm it's good. The next two days are gonna be good and then Sunday we're having a sprinkle shower for my granddaughter that's having her third child. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday I'm gonna do Christmas decorations. I'm going to go in the kitchen and help Bree. Y'all visit as long as you want. Thank you. Thank you. Everything was delicious. Well, yep. Thank you. Hi, John. Come on Hello. in. Come on. These are the ladies from uh, Fentress and Scott County. I, you want to yes. give your names as you come in? so they'll well, we're, We don't know if we should give our names. <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's legit? <laughs> I'm Marcia Swain. <laughs> I'll let me just walk here. Shelton. Cheryl Butler. Cheryl, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Looks like you're ready for a good time today. Oh, uh, we, we always have a good time. And, and there's two ladies.